Hi guys, Rasmus here. Today we're taking a look at my Ibanez RD7321, uh, uh, which is a guitar I've had for about 10 years. Um, it's one of the cheaper models. It's made in Indonesia. Um, so why are we taking a look at this now? Um, so one reason is that these are still uh, pretty available in the used market. Um, so you might want to pick one up for a couple of hundred bucks. Um, and this video is basically to tell you if you should do that or not. The setup that I'm playing for here is the guitar going into a tube screamer and then going into my 65.5. Uh, so on some of the clips you hear, um, I have the tube coming off and just going into the 655 on the red channel with the gain at around 3. Um, and on some I'm boosting it, uh, not a whole lot, but just a little bit with a with a tube screamer. So this is a pretty simple and straightforward 7-string uh, guitar. So it's a uh, flat top, uh, just with the usual RG shape from Ibanez. Uh, it has one of their wizard necks, which is uh, composed of Mabel and I think it's Bubinga, or else it's Wenge depending on how you announce that, and then uh, pronounce that, and then a rosewood fretboard. Uh, nickel frets, um, cheap Ibanez tuners, uh, a cheap nut, a very cheap bridge um, that we'll get more into, and then originally it also comes with some very cheap uh, Ibanez own branded pickups. So as you can see, I've swapped the pickups. Uh, these are DiMarcios. These were originally the pickups that was in my Chris Broderick um, Jackson Soloist 7-string uh, guitar, which I swapped for some Duncans. Um, but then I put the, the Demarius in this guitar. So back when Ibanez was still making these, and I guess to some degree still, um, they seemed to have an idea of putting very cheap pickups in their guitar, both from their cheapest guitars up to their more high-end guitars. And I think the idea might have been something along the lines of we put in a cheap pickup so that the guitar is still fairly cheap and then people can go out and buy uh, a more expensive afterwards a pickup afterwards and put that in and then people will end up with the guitar with the pickups that's exactly what they want um the issue with this is of course that you then have a lot of guitars that when people try them in stores they sound like garbage um so this guitar was no exceptions the uh, the pickups uh, it came with were quite bad so that's why i swapped them um but even, I think, on the Prestige series, uh, you had pickups that were, uh, I think, designed in a collaboration between Ibanez and DiMarcio, but they were basically still uh, Ibanez's uh, own brand of pickups, and they didn't sound that great. I think today they tr changed that strategy around, and some of their guitars come with Duncan, some come with DiMarcio, and some even come with bare knuckle pickups, which are some very expensive pickups. Um, so I think they realized that that having great guitars sitting in stores with very very bad pickups was maybe not the, the way to sell the most guitars. So apart from the pickups, um, the next topic, uh, I guess that's more controversial on this guitar, is the bridge. Um, so as you can see, this is a very old school design, almost like a fender, just a very simple uh, piece of steel. And then with these saddles, it has these screws popping up. Now these screws that uh, come up, up here, they kind of scrape against your hand. And a lot of people complain that it kind of hurts if you, if you try and palm mute on it, because these uh, screws get in your way all the time. Um, now the bridge itself is actually pretty great. It's very adjustable, so you can really nail in the uh, the, the the string height um, so that it it sits quite perfect. So you can make the action very low on this guitar. But I do agree that this is not the most comfortable bridge ever designed. However, I have kind of come to terms with it. Um, it doesn't really bother me when playing anymore um, because you don't have your your hand that low on the guitar anyway. I tend to palm mute a bit further up. Um, so it doesn't really bother me in that sense. Yeah, and continue on with the bridge. I think on the revised version that came out uh, a couple of years later, uh, they had their own upgraded bridge on it, uh, which had a lot smoother design, a bit in the style of a hip shot bridge. <laughs> Thank you. 
actual electronics on this guitar, so the pots and the uh, five-way switch uh, and the jack. Um, those are actually quite uh, well crafted. Um, I have not changed them while I changed the pickups, and again I've had this guitar for quite some time. And the pots have never failed me, the uh, switch have never failed me, and I've never had to tighten the input jack or anything, so that has just been uh, very straightforward. Um, now the neck on this guitar is an Ibanez uh, Wizard neck. Um, so it's a pretty flat radius all the way up, so it has the same radius, um, which you can either like or not. Um, and then it has a somewhat thin neck. Um, I also have a, uh, a Japanese Prestige uh, Ibanez model, and the that's also 7 string, and the neck is a, a lot thinner on that one. So this neck is it's not thick by any stretch of imagination, but it's, it's definitely not the, the thinnest neck. So people that worry that it's going to be like this tiny little neck is... Um, yeah, no, not on, on this one. Um, it's a bit thicker, I guess also because it's cheaper, it's just easier to make something that's a bit more thicker and a bit more robust and won't break as easily. Last we have the tuners and the knob. And uh, these tuners doesn't even say any brand or anything on them. Uh, yeah, so they are basically just a cheap Ibanez ones. Um, they work alright, you can definitely keep it in tune and you can play through a, a song like you saw in the intro um, fine without tuning issues. So you can, it's, it's definitely manageable and you can play several songs in a rehearsal room without having to tune. Um, that said, I do find that I have to tune it once in a while. But on the other hand, I'm also used to Floyd Rose guitars, which you never really have to tune, unless you really have to tune them. Uh, you know, if you've done a lot of Floyd Rose action, it's kind of gone out of tune. But since this is a hot tail, you, you have to tune a bit more often. But it's not an issue and, and the tuners are fine. Um, you can tighten them here on top with a screwdriver. So don't overdo it, but you can tighten them a bit and that gives you a bit more control and and then that also reduces the play that, that can that can be in these uh, tuners. Um, it is something that you could replace, but again, it's a cheap guitar, so is it something where you really want to start upgrading the tuners and the bridge and... Well, I have upgraded the pickup, so maybe. The nut is also just a cheap plastic one. Um, it does have an, a tendency to grip the strings a bit. Um, so when you tune, sometimes you nothing really happens and then all of a sudden a lot happens. Or when you're bending, all of a sudden you kind of, I think you, you move the string a bit, so all of a sudden the tuning is, is way off on just that one string. Um, so not a, the ideal knot, but in it's, it's, it's something you come across in, in rare cases. It's, it's not something that's happening all the time. So you can definitely live with it. The frets on this particular instrument is very well done. Uh, so as you can see, there's binding on the uh, on the neck, um, and then and the frets are not sticking out in any way. So there's no kind of uncomfortable where you kind of uh, you know shred your your fingers as you move them up and down the fretboard. Um, so that's really nice, and they're really even. So uh, again, you can get the action very low, and you don't have a lot of fret fret bars or anything like that. At least on this particular instrument. And in general, I would say that the fit and finish of this guitar is is great. Uh, so again, the frets are great. Um, Strap locks, electronics, uh, jack um, input have all stayed in place, uh, no issues there. The neck pocket here is, is tight, uh, the neck sits fairly firm uh, in there. Um, that's usually a, an easy way to tell a, a poorly manufactured guitar if there's like a millimeter or something on, on one side of the, uh, of the neck, then you, know, you, you might move on. <laughs> so I originally bought this guitar as a backup, so this is my second 7-string uh, guitar. Uh, as mentioned, the first um, guitar I, or first seven-string guitar I brought was an Ibanez Prestige uh, that I brought used. Um, and then when playing shows with that, I, I obviously wanted a, a backup because that has a tremolo. So if you break a string, then you basically can't play because it's uh, never going to be in tune. Uh, so I brought this as a backup. Um, I've never, I've never actually had to use it as a backup, um, but I've also had it in various rehearsal rooms just to skip the part of moving guitars back and forth. It's easy to just have a guitar that always sits in the rehearsal room uh, and it wasn't that expensive, so if somebody broke in and stole our gear, it wasn't wasn't that much of a disaster. Um, but sitting in the rehearsal room, this guitar is also uh, written a lot of songs with and uh, recorded a lot of demos with. Um, so it's 
generally a great instrument. So in conclusion, I would say that if you see one of these uh, for sale, uh, used, um, I would definitely consider picking it up if it's at a nice price. Um, know that you will have to, for most people at least, at least switch the, uh, the bridge pickup. Um, but still, so a couple of hundred bucks for the guitar, so two or three hundred euros. Um, and then maybe 50 or 100 euros uh, for a pickup. Pickups can be found used for like 50 bucks. Um, of course, you then you don't always get to choose, but just buying uh, a reasonable quality like the Marshall or Sima Duncan, maybe it's not the exact model that you want, but it's still going to be an improvement on the stock pickups. And since it's anyway a, a cheaper guitar, having maybe not the perfect, but a, still a great pickup in this guitar will definitely do wonders.